Now it's time to create a function or a method which will calculate the result. Of course, right, when you submit this question on a client side, basically because we were able to create questions, we were able to create quiz, and then we were able to get the quiz as well. And now when a client want to send the responses on the server, of course, to get the score, it's our job now on the server side to calculate it. So what kind of response a client will send? So let's understand that. Let's, going, let's go back here to the postman. Now, if you say a quiz, this is a quiz which we have created, right? The ID for this quiz is one. And when I click on send here, you can see these are the questions we have. So in total, we got five questions. We got question number 18, question number eight, uh, then 17, six and 19, right? Now in our example, the question number 19 and 18, they are same because we were doing some experiment and then we've added so the same question two times. And even if in random format, it was able to get the same question. That's weird. But anyway, the point is when a user is getting this questions and when they answer, let's say for this particular question, the answer is, let's say three. And then a user says two, of course, a wrong answer for this particular question. Let's say the answer is I'm not even reading question. Let's say the answer is D and then a user is selecting D. Now in that case, uh, it is correct answer. Once a user get the data, from, from the client side, when a user submits the response, how you can send that to server? So what you can do is you can send two things. See, we, we don't need all these things when you're sending the response, right? You need only two things. First, you need the question ID because that's unique for every question. And you need the right answer which a user has selected. So not right answer, but a user response. So can I say we are sending two things to the server where you have ID and response, something like this. So we will be creating a new request, which will be for submit, not for get, but for submit. And we have to mention the quiz ID. So for which particular quiz a user is attempting that. So let's say the quiz ID is one, but now we want to send responses, right? Now for the responses, what you can do is you can just click on draw here and we want JSON format, but the data which we want here is different. So of course we, we are going to send the list of responses. So we'll use list there. And then each response will have an ID. So let's say the ID in this case is okay. We have to get the IDs as well. So the first ID is 18. So the ID 18, the response selected from the user. So we can say response colon, whatever the response was. Uh, now what we will do is first of all, we don't know the answers, right? And what I will do is, I will just remember this. I'll try to remember this, but if we got 18, uh, let me just write it somewhere. I will write it here. So we got 18, eight, 17, six and 19. Of course, I do remember the answers for this, but you should never trust your own knowledge. You should always confirm from the, from the database, right? What if something goes wrong with the database itself? So what I will do is I will just try to fetch the answers from the database. The way you can do that is by going to the PG admin and here we can fire a query. So basically we want the answer, right? So let me just, I don't need this. I can keep it here. So can I edit this query? No, let me just go to query tool. So basically I'm into Postgres PG admin now, and I want to fetch the ID for a particular question. And I want to fetch the right answer for that particular question. I think the right answer column name is right answer. If I'm not wrong, let's try from question where, in fact, let me just put where below here, where uh, ID is equal to. So now we need all these IDs here, right? So I can just paste it here. So ID is equal to eight or, okay. So ID can be 18, ID can be eight, 17, six and 19. So that I will get all the answers here. And run this, you can see we got the answers, right? So for question number 18 and 19, it's three. So it's that becomes easy. Question number six is this, question number eight is this, and question number 17 is this. So normally we are sending the response itself. Maybe you can customize it and don't send the answer. You can send the option number. So A, B, C, D, that, that works. But there's only one problem. If you want to randomize the option. So on the server side, let's say you have A, B, C, D in sequence, the answers or the options, but then when you are sending that to client, maybe you want to randomize it there. In that case, it will not work. So it's good to check the right answer instead of checking the options. Okay, so this looks cool. Uh, we got the answer here. So what we will do here is the response for 18 is this. I will just copy this response for 18 is this. 
and then I can just copy this. I'm just trying to recreate this. So fast forward, I will complete everything now. So as I mentioned, fast forward, we got all the uh, options. In fact, we got the response created here, right? Now this is what you are going to send on the server. So example, when I click on send, it should basically calculate the values and send the result. So how many are correct? Now at this point, I have entered all the correct answer. So of course this score should be five, right? That's what we want. So how do we get this? So it's very simple. Let's go back to our IntelliJ. So since we are sending a request for the submit, so I will say post mapping and this will be happening for submit and we can also accept the quiz ID. So let's say this is the ID for the quiz. Now for this, we need to create a method. So I will say public. Now what we need to return, so I can simply say response entity and what we want to return is a score, right? So we can return a score with the integer value and I can name this as submit quiz. And what are the values we have to accept? Basically, we have to accept two values. One, the ID, which you are submitting here, the quiz ID. And second is the responses, right? So let me accept that here. Now this is a path variable, so I will use that. And it will go into integer ID. And next, we need to accept the body, right? Now this is getting sent in the JSON format. So it will be this request body. And then we'll store that in a object. Now which object? Now basically we need an object which will have two values, the ID and response. So let me create a response object. So I will say response, response. And we are not sending one response, right? We are sending multiple responses. So I have to say this is a list of response. But unfortunately we don't have response class, right? As you can see, we don't have response. So we need to create one. But why it is taking a response? Is it, okay, there's an inbuilt class called response and that's why it is taking it but I want to have my own class of response. Okay, let me create a class here. So basically in this particular model, we can create a class called response. So I will say this is a response. Now this will be a very simple class, just like question wrapper. The thing we need here is, so first of all, I want to use Lombok here, which is data. And then I also want a constructor. So I can say required argument constructor. It will give me parameterize and default constructor. And we just need two variables. So I will say private integer ID and private string response. So basically we got the variable name as response as well. Uh, so we got response class in which we have response as a variable. I know that sounds weird, but we can, we can go with that. Okay. So we got this class, right? And once we got this class, I can just import that class here, control space and importing done. Now, once we got the response, we need to, Calculate now. How will we calculate? So basically that's where your service class comes into picture. So I will simply say return and I will ask my quiz service to calculate or maybe I can say, or maybe we can say calculate result. And then we have to pass the ID, the quiz ID and we'll pass the responses. Of course, right? You will not be doing any calculation in the controller. So let's do that in the service and let me create this method in the service. So method created. Now this is where the actual fun happens, right? Uh, let me just verify the controller once if everything is good. Okay, looks good. Let's go back to service and this is where you have to do the calculation. So here we need to add some logic. The first thing you have to do is we have to get a quiz object because that's how you will get the quiz, right? Because in one quiz you have multiple questions. So with this ID here, we can get the quiz questions. Uh, so I can simply say, I want to get this from data database. So I will say, Quiz DAO dot find by ID. So give me that quiz question and I have to pass the ID here. Now the only thing is find by ID will give you optional uh, data. So we want the data so we can say get. So when you say get, you don't have to put optional here, which we have done before. If you can see, we have used optional here, but that's your choice. The better option is this because here you can check if it is present or not. It's better to handle this way to write a better software. But since we just are learning, learning phase, we can try this. Now, once we got the quiz, it's time to get the questions from the quiz. And we'll put that in a list. So I will say list of question. And I will say questions is equal to, this will be coming from quiz. So quiz dot get questions. Okay, now once we got the quiz question, now it's just comparing 
the values in the response and in the questions. That's it. That's the only thing you have to do. But how do you do it? Let's try. So of course we have to iterate to the loop and I can iterate with response. I can say response, response, colon, responses. So basically we have to just iterate from the list and check each answer. Now, even if it is right, where you will put it? So how do you count the variable? So what we can do is we can say int right. This is a variable which, which you're creating and default value will be zero. And then every time you see a right answer, you will just increment it. Now, how do you compare? So basically we have to check if my response dot get response, if it is equal to uh, the question, so we have to get the first question from the question, right? Okay. So responses and the quiz will be on the same format. So basically we, we have to compare this response from the questions, right? Uh, we have the question here. So what we can do is we can also use a variable to iterate. Maybe you could have just use a normal variable. Even that could have worked. So I can just say every time I do this, I just have to say I plus plus here. Okay, not in the if condition, of course. And then here we have to get the question, right? So I can say questions dot get with the index one or with, with the index i, and then we have to get the right answer. So we just have to compare with the right answer. If it is successful, then we can say write plus plus. That's it. Okay, I just hope it will work because we are using i plus plus and bugs are a part of a life, right? It says one more bracket missing, is it? So I need to close this one. Then I need to close this one, done. Okay, why there's a problem here? Okay, so basically once you got the response, the right answer, you will return the value. So you will return the new response entity object, which will have the right answer and also the status code, which is HTTP, status dot okay now let's verify now since we have all the right answers the output should be five that's what we're expecting so we start properly done let's head back to our postman and say submit oh we got five now intentionally i will just make one question wrong let's say this is not four this is not three this is four so that's the wrong answer i've given send we got four okay let's make one more wrong uh, let's say this is 128. I'm not even know the other answers, but all the other options, but let's try send. You can see we got three. So that's right. We were able to send the response on the server and we got this code. Okay. So we are slowly building this thing, right? In fact, this is the only thing you have to do. Uh, so we got all the services which we need for the microservices. So what we have done till now is building a monolithic application where you have everything in one project. Of course, this project is simple. Uh, in enterprise world, we make complex project, but that's not important, right? The logic is not important. Important is how do you break down this project into small parts? How can we differentiate between the quiz service and a question service? So there will be two different services like microservices, and we'll see how do we interact with them. So that's your monolithic quiz application. Now let me know in the comments, how you are able to make it more optimized. And I would love to see your code on the GitHub and do share the link with us. So that's it from this video where we were able to create this, submit this, and I will share this project on GitHub as well. You will find the link in description, but uh, we'll enhance it so that you can make a microservices out of it.